Well, this might not be quite definitive, but here we go. So, 93F150 XLT, doesn't matter. It's got the rear analog brake system in it. So, the video I showed, or will show, or whatever, um, I made a tool. There's a three-prong outlet on this thing. And there's one of them <clears throat> was hooked to a ground. And then the other ones, I was just tapping back and forth between these two. Uh, so... The way this is supposed to work is basically that's your isolation valve, that's your reset valve. When your truck is, uh, your, your rear wheels start to spin slower than your truck thinks you're going or whatever, it starts to notice a lockup. <clears throat> what it'll do first is it'll send a signal and it'll actuate the isolation solenoid right here so then this is your rear analog brake module so point 13 will send a signal here and as i understand it what this will do is it will shut off the hydraulic fluid to your rear end so it cannot receive any more uh, pressure from your master cylinder and then if it continues if it doesn't start matching the speed your vehicle's supposed to be going uh and i'm not sure how they do that exactly it will start to pulse and dump pressure off of your rear brakes right here so you got to have your ground hooked up and you know this may be i haven't measured this this could be a five volt off your five volt reference here it could be 12 i'm not sure i use a battery charger with the a 12 volt charger on the two amp set and so you know maybe you want to put a resistor or a light bulb in there or something i don't know how much to send through this i do know there's resistance in here and the book wrote that down so you ground that what i did 12 volt battery charger ground lead was here i touched this one first and then I actually just rattle back and forth between the two, but you know, I suppose you could touch that and then go ahead and touch that one at the same time. But if you touch this one, it seems to me like it must lock it because there's a reset input. I'm not sure, but either way, that's what's going on there. So to bleed the RABS module, I unplugged the RABS module, applied ground negative from 12 volt two amps applied to 535 that's a wire right there circuit 535 i push and hold the brake then i applied 12 volt two amps to 599 wire number 599 isolation valve then applied 12 volts to 664 brake will go to the floor unplug and release the brake slowly and then repeat do that about three times after bleeding brakes and the rabs assembly my brakes improved a lot last thing I did end up replacing the master cylinder and booster because my master cylinder was leaking into my booster. After that, the brakes weren't like new. So the brakes were kind of spongy. So <clears throat> if they're not spongy before you start bleeding your brakes, if you end up replacing this rear analog -like brake valve assembly, which you probably don't need to do, uh, brake shops laughed at me they wouldn't even touch these the dealership wouldn't even work on it so nobody in town would touch it so if you do end up doing this you know drain your brakes bleed your brakes like normal but this thing here you're probably going to have to do and if they were, were not spongy before you started all this um uh, you know, bleed your brakes like normal. I just open them all up, let them all start dripping. And then, you know, I think they say, it's weird. They say do the, I can't remember if it's the driver's side rear and then the uh, passenger front and then passenger rear and driver front, or if they said pass your rear and driver front, you know, something like that. They wanted you to bleed like one, two, then three, four, or either one, two, and then three, four, as far as your front rear tires. I didn't see any difference with it. I started with my back and bled my front. And this is only hooked up into your rear brake system. So, you know, I bled everything out of this. I hit the bleeder screw on it. The, you've got a return line goes up to your master cylinder, which comes off this and electronically it's actuated then. But I did bleed the little valve on there. But uh, what I'm doing here is basically just what that $500 test tool did. So hopefully... 
that finally will solve the issue that everybody's having bleeding their brakes. I've got it figured out here and it took a lot of messing around to get her done. In a previous video, I talked about bleeding this RABS module here. So I had to change my rear brake cylinders because they were leaking after I bled it last time. So this time I stopped by the junkyard and got me a connector. And I wired up the ground to the black wire and then the uh, red and yellow wire are going to be the two different heights and the green wire I didn't hook to anything. So I wired that up to an extension cord. Yeah. And I got my two amp, I got a battery charger set on two amps. I hooked my ground to my ground so the other two is going to be hot. I can't remember which one's which there. I can get this set up where you can see what I'm doing here. So now I'm going to bleed that rear anti lock brake module. So I'm popping this set. You can see. But if I, especially this one. I'm letting up off of it slow. I don't know if it matters if you go back and forth between the two. But if I just push this one, it bleeds that module. We'll get you a little bit better view. So this one's on the ground. I pump it up. And, you know. So I'm not doing both of them at the same time. It kind of looked like that in the camera. I suppose a guy could do this. Maybe to more simulate what it's doing. Not sure. 